This is edition 94A of Gareth Jones on Speed, continuing our exclusive coverage of the 2009 Le Mans Tour. Podcast with images. To view these pictures, please play this episode in iTunes or Apple QuickTime or on your mobile media player. It's 15 minutes before the race starts and we're walking towards our position to watch the start of the race. We're worried that we're not going to make it in time. We're just at the back of the start finish straight at the moment, but the back by the paddock. Vince, you said something really interesting last night about the spirit of Le Mans being like something we used to do in the 90s. Yeah, well, there's a great sense of camaraderie and uh, everyone pulls together and everyone just loves motorsports. So. What does it remind you of? Where else have we had that? Uh, when we used to go raving. <laughs> <laughs> I've always said that Le Mans is like Glastonbury. You know, it's a 24-hour non-stop race, but the, it's true, the vibe is very much the same, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's, it's all the people and uh, there's, there's no bad feeling here at all, which is great. Now I'm hanging from a homemade platform at the back of the main start finish straight grandstand. Me best mates beside me, I'm feeling euphoric, I want to hold his hand. I'm coming up now, full of elation. We sing the anthems of every nation. There's 150 drivers, this is going to take ages. I read me Autosport magazine Le Mans guide, the print dances off the pages. At precisely 12 minutes to three, we found our position. We're just on the inside of the circuit at the end of the start finish straight before you get to the Dunlop Bridge and they just held up the sign that said clear the grid the next sound you will hear will be the cars on the parade lap and just when I feel I can't take any more suddenly tens of thousands of horsepower all roar into life I imagine Vanina's my wife and there she is with a pretty little size six French foot to the floor. I'm thinking nothing is better. This is ace. Then I realise I'm just at the start of the race. There go all the LMP1s, here's the LMP2s and the Corvettes. That's the first Porsche 911. A Lamborghini from J-Lock at the end. The Japanese Lamborghini Owners Club, who made the start. I wonder if they'll make it round. There's Luca Di Monte Zemmler is on the platform. He's going to start the race. Damn, drat, blast and curses. That means you're going to have to listen to and I'm going to have to write at least another five or six verses. The cars are coming through the Porsche curves now onto the start finish straight. And you'll know when the race starts. Listen to this. You're about to hear 55 cars all at the same time. And about 250,000 people cheering. Here they go. field have gone through a flashing blur of motor racing a firework display it was wasn't it they're so bright and they just burst at racing speed past you uh, unbelievable welcome to Le Mans Andrew I'm still looking for a map <laughs> You're actually at a race rate that's great And last 
Excitement in the crowd as one of the Peugeots has overtaken the Audi. There are two Peugeots leading an Audi at the end of the first lap now. There'll be a big roar as they come through here from the French. They've completed the first lap at racing speeds and they're going to pass us again now with the Peugeot leading. There'll be a huge cheer. the Astons really scream Do you know what? I could watch this all day. And I'm going to. And all night. Derek Jones on speed at Le That is the sound of the inside of the last of the Dunlop S's before the cars go towards Tetra Rouge and blast out into the forest. It's one of the closest points you can get on the circuit as a Ferrari comes by. That last one was a Spiker. That was an Aston. And a pair of his silent Peugeots. Another Audi. That's the new Audi V10. It's an Aston. Followed by uh, the Lola Aston. So, from listening to the sound of the cars, the new Aston Martins really do sing and rasp beautifully, adding to the chorus of sounds we get from. Here's a silent hour. Oh no, it's this is Bruno Senna. Bruno Senna in the uh, Matmut Orica. Those two were an Aston followed by a Peugeot. I'm standing perhaps no more than 40 foot away from the cars, just on the apex of the last turn. And I've had to set the recording level on this machine to ultra low. Corvette. And another Corvette and the Pescarolo. And a 911. Oh. Gareth Jones on speed, how in it? A bit of the morn at night, lovely. Fantastic. It's almost exactly three o'clock in the morning. And we're standing on the same spot that we were this morning. The classic race and instead of those lovely old Le Mans legends going by we've got your full LMP1 LMP2 GT1 and GT2 category cars this is motor racing in the 21st century the cars are lit up they have their numbers lit up on the door from behind they're backlit we also have three lights, two lights, one light lit up on the side of their side pods so you can tell which car is first, second and third in each category. And each of those categories has a different colour. So even at night I can tell, there goes the leading GT2 Ferrari just went by. It took me a moment because I'm tired and emotional. That was a Peugeot. That 
was all the leaders. You get bursts of flame from the exhausts. You can see the brake disc. Tim? Yeah. What's the difference between this and what we saw here this morning? What, the classics? Oh, this is the future. This is Blade Runner racing, isn't it? It is. Listen, it's very late. We're going to bed. I'll leave you with a few sounds while we get some sleep. Good afternoon. It's about 2.25. That means about 35 minutes before the end of this magnificent 24-hour race. And Zog and I have taken a position on the main stand on the outside in the terraces with the Scots and the French and the Danes and the Germans and the Dutch and the Americans and the Japanese and the people from all over the world who, like us, have come to witness a spectacular race as one of the Aston Martins goes by. Tim and Vince and Andrew are so smitten by Indianapolis that they've decided to watch the end of the race from that corner that Zog and I have come down to join in the party. That's what I believe about Le Mans. This is not a race that you come and watch. It's something that you participate in. The way that you dress up your car before you arrive. The car that you arrive in. The outfits you wear when you're at the circuit. It's a fully interactive race. I know I say it all the time. If you love cars, you've really got to come to Le Mans if you've never done it before. And do it like we do camp as close as you can to the circuit and make sure you're in the terrace for the end of the race. Zog's just doing some filming at the moment. What do you reckon Zog? Good one so far? Very good. Peugeot have done exceptionally well haven't they? Yeah I mean it looks like they've got the one two in the bag and uh, you know beating Audi is beating Audi is where we think. As I think the 250,000 people around us will agree not long to go before the end of the race there go the Aston Martins and the Lola or one of the Lolas and with about 2 minutes 36 seconds left to run of this race that's probably the last time they're going to come past here. And the next time the Peugeot's come past, there's going to be one heck of a roar. Gets a sense of shuffling of positions now. Everybody is inching forward, literally just a couple of inches and standing on the tips of their toes and craning their necks. Flags have been waved, Aston Martin flags, French flags, Persian flags, Audi flags, Australian flags, McNish's, Scottish, Salter. There goes one of the Colin, Colin Collis Audis. Peugeot mechanics are lined up on the grid opposite. No need to tell you what those two cars were. There's a wall of blue 
waving little Peugeot lions directly opposite me. We're standing, by the way, directly opposite the Peugeot garage of the number 7, 8 and 9 car and the Pascarolo Peugeot next to it. The countdown continues, 44 seconds. It's gone very quiet. Not for long. Every car getting a cheer now. That's the one of the Ferraris, several of the LMP2 cars. Too fast to see which ones they were and too close to my side of the fence. My view is good, but I can see the, be the other side of the track better than this side. Nine seconds. Here we go. Chassis the Team Seba car. And here comes the great rivals, the champions now defeated, Audi. Yeah, the Astons. Huge support for the Astons, even from the front. We're thrilled to see such a great mark at Le Mans. There go the Colin Collis Audis. Two of them still running at the end. There's the speedy team Seba car, the other one, they're running two Seb speedy. That was the one driven by Neil Yarni. Oh, that's flirting right to the very end. Lighting up the pit lane. Super Ari. Still the cars come. Four Ferraris. And the Audi. Number three, one car running at the end. Spike Hills. Still going at the end. Well done, Spike Well done, Peugeot, for taking the car to Audi and beating them. Well done for Audi making it such a difficult challenge. Right, now the crowd invasion of the pit lane begins. I'm going to go and rest my voice. Get more info on this show at garethjones.tv. Write to the show on speed at garethjones.tv or subscribe for free at the iTunes store. Gareth Jones on Speed is made by Whizbang.